In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from paper two of the 2024 Leave and Cert Ordinary Level exam. If you are looking for a different question from this paper, you should find a link to a playlist in the description below. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully so it's similar to what you're used to your teacher doing in the classroom. But remember, this isn't a classroom, we're on YouTube, so take advantage of that. Use the pause button, rewind, fast forward, watch it in high speed or slow speed, whatever helps you out. And if you do find this video or any of my videos useful, I would appreciate like, subscribe, all that stuff. What really helps out the channel the most is though, sharing it with someone that might find it useful. In question eight, they tell us a story about a fish shop owner that has a sign um, they give us an image, something like this. The, the sign is three meters tall. There's a cable attached to it, uh, to the point G here. And the length, the length of the, the base of the cable to the base of the sign is 1.4 meters. And they ask us to find the length of the cable, basically. They even tell us how to do it. They tell us to use uh, the theorem of Pythagoras, or Pythagoras theorem, to find uh, the length of this cable. So. This very common in questions. They give you some drawing, some idea. Draw it again, but just make it even simpler. Triangle, that's all that's important here. A right angle triangle. Uh, lengths, put in those. That, that's it. That's all we really need from this one. Pythagoras' uh, theorem tells us that hypotenuse squared is equal to these two squared. Uh, to help you with that, uh, they asked about this length. Just put in a letter, any letter, A, B, C, or X is very common. Uh, Pythagoras theorem tells us that the length of the hypotenuse, the longest one, the one across from the right angle, that squared is equal to the other two um, squared added together. <coughs> if you put that into a calculator, you get uh, 10.96, that's X squared. But we want X, so we need to get, uh, get rid of the X squared. Uh, to, to do that, to get the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of this side um, is, uh, what is that? A uh, three point, uh, rounded off to one decimal place at uh, 3.3. And that's the answer to part one. In part two, they want you to show that the size of the angle FGH, that's FGH, that's this angle in here, um, show that that's 65 degrees to the nearest degree. Again, forget this drawing, let's go down here. They want to know about this angle in here, theta. <coughs> now, when you're dealing with triangles, you should think of three things. If it's a right angle, use, uh, use I'll, I'll write them up here because we are going to use them. Uh, sine theta is equal opposite over adjacent, cosine theta is equal to adjacent over, sorry, this should be opposite over hypotenuse, my bad, adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent over uh, tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Sorry, I was stumbling there because I remember these by, by a little tune in my head. Uh, most of you probably do the same. Uh, my tune is oh hell, another hour of algebra, but I know people have different ones. Uh, but you actually don't need any of them. They're, you will find these in, in your uh, tables book. You have, to, you have to search, it doesn't look quite like this, but they're in there. Um, so which, what do we want here? We want to know an angle, they all have angles, that's good. We know the opposite of the angle, and we know the adjacent. Actually, we even know the hypotenuse, but uh, we did round off here, so I, I, I tend not to use this. But really, you could use any one of these you want. Uh, we'll go ahead with the tangent, because we have the opposite and the adjacent w without rounding them off. So the tangent here, the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite, is 3 divided by the adjacent which is a 1.4. We, we don't want tan theta though, we want theta. So how do you get rid of tan? How do you destroy tan? If we take the inverse of tan, it destroys it. But we have to do that to both sides. The inverse of tan. So on your calculator, it's tan to the power of minus 1. That's, that's the inverse of tan. Um, and we get this, put this into your calculator, it looks scary, but it's, it's really not. Just put it into your calculator and you get uh, 64.98. They want you to round it off to the nearest degree. And they already told you this was the answer, so should be no surprise to get that. 
In part three, they tell us the second cable uh, from G is attached to the sign halfway up. So halfway up this sign here. And uh, they phrase the question like this. They say, Mairead says that the new angle, the angle in it, what was the, this angle was 65. She says the new angle should be half of that. So half of 65 is uh, 32 and a half. Looks about okay. But the, so that's her guess, half the height, half the angle. And uh, they want you to test that. Uh, use calculations. Um, I think there's probably some theorem, uh, some, some uh, geometry theorem, uh, geom yeah, um, that can prove this either way. But th they ask for calculations. Basically, they want you just to find this new angle, just like you did up here. You found that angle, let's find this one and let's see if it's half the height. So let's draw the picture again, just a bit simpler. Uh, as a triangle, right angle. What's the height here? It's not three, it's half of three, 1.5. That's uh, That might have tripped up some people. Uh, what's the length? It's still 1.4, and we don't know the angle. Uh, we'll put that as TN. Oh, I've rubbed out uh, the, the sine, cosine, and tan ones here, but hopefully you can see we have an angle, we have the opposite, we have the adjacent. We're gonna use tan again. Uh, tan theta is equal to 1.5 divided by 1.4. Just like last time, the inverse tan of both sides destroys this tan and um, affects the right-hand side only then. Uh, 1.5 divided by 1.4. Put that into your calculator and you get uh, 47, or round it off to 47. 47 is not half of 65. So uh, Mairead uh, was not correct, and that's your, that's your proof there. In part B, they tell us about a logo the shop has that looks roughly like this. Uh, I, hopefully I've copied it, copied it roughly correctly. And they're gonna ask us questions about this. Uh, for part one, they simply ask us to find this angle down here. Now, you don't need this whole shape for that. Let me just draw uh, this smaller triangle down here again. Uh, 10, 12, 37, and the angle we're looking for. Uh, a good rule of thumb for triangles is, there's six things to know about triangle. Angle, 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 length, length, length. Six things. If you know three of them, you can get to everything. The only exception is, if you know three angles, you're a bit stuck. Uh, in this case, no, we know three things, a length, length, and an angle. We should be able to find anything. Uh, there's three ways to do it then. You should be thinking the, the rules I had here, the OHEL and other hour of algebra rules, if it's a right angle. And it's not a right angle. That's the easiest one to do. It's not a right angle, so we can't use them. Next thing you should be thinking is the sine rule. Uh, let me draw that here, because we are going to use that. Um, the sine rule is like sine of an angle divided by the length across from it is equal to sine of another angle divided by the length across from it. And that's the one we're gonna use now. Uh, if, if this one fails, uh, next thing you should use is the cosine rule. It's a little harder, again, but there, one of those three will always work in a triangle. Um, in this case, no right angle, so we move on to this. And look what we have. We have an angle we're looking for, and the length across from it. Okay, that's good. We have an angle and the length across from it. The sine rule works here. If we start filling in the sine rule, we write sine, an angle, the one we're looking for, uh, divided by the length across from it, which is 12. That's equal to sine of another angle. It doesn't matter which angle. This one would have worked fine as well if they gave it to us. Sine of uh, the other angle, 37, divided by the length across from it, and that's 10. It doesn't work. If they gave us this length here, it wouldn't have worked uh, because we don't have the angle across from it. Uh, you would have had to use the cosine rule. Anyway, this one works. The only thing we're looking for is theta. Just start moving things until we have t. Like what we want at the end is theta equals. So let's get rid of this 12. Destroy it. Uh, multiply, multiply this by 12, it'll disappear. Um, so multiply the left by 12, it's gone. If you multiply the left by 12, you have to multiply the right. Um, 12 times uh, sine uh, 37 divided by 10. Again, most people just think move this, was divide, now multiply, but still, it's fine. Uh, we need to get rid of the sign. We need to destroy it. Uh, to destroy that, uh, we take the inverse sign of both sides. We get theta on the left, 
is equal to the inverse sine of everything on the right. That's 12 times sine 37 over 10. You can put all that into a calculator. Uh, if you want, you can put each part separately in. It'll take a little more writing. I, I just like to put it all in the calculator and then I like to check my answer two or three times. Uh, if you put all that into your calculator, and uh, let me just check my notes, you get, I believe, uh, 40, 46 to the nearest, uh, theta equals 46 to the nearest um, degree, yeah, which is what they asked you. In B part two, uh, they ask us for this length here. They, they write lots of numbers and everything, but basically it comes down to, uh, what's the letters? CE. Um, so this was C and this is E. They ask us the length of CE. They even give us a hint. They tell us we're going to use the cosine rule. Um, now, how I would do this first, even if they didn't give us that hint, first thing, forget this drawing, draw a simpler one. And that's just need one triangle. That's uh, length 11.8, length 22, and angle 110. And the one we're looking for, let's put an X in for that. And again, this triangle has three things we know. So we should be able to find everything. Is it a right angle? No, can't use that way. Uh, sine rule, you could try sine rule. Angle, length across from it, good. And no other angle with a length across from it. Okay, so we're in a bit of trouble there, no sine rule. They've already told us though, use the cosine rule. Uh, remember then the cosine and sine rule, they're in your book, you have them. Uh, the, co the cosine rule tells us a length, this, the, one you're, the one across from the angle at least, a length squared is equal to either side squared. Well, let me, let me draw what's in the book first, I suppose. Um, it would be something like a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. That's a length is equal to the other length squared plus the other length squared. Just like Pythagoras theorem, where it gets different then is it's minus bc, um, minus two bc, I think, uh, times cosine the angle across from this guy. So the angle across from this guy. So if we use this formula in this question, it would become x squared is equal to 22 squared plus 11.8 squared minus two times 22. I'm just filling in the numbers um, times 11.8. So x is the, is the length across from the angle. And the other two are just the two numbers. They can B or C, it doesn't matter which is which. Cosine um, 110. You can put all that into your calculator. Just be careful doing it. Put all that into your calculator. You'll get X squared is equal to, um, here it is here, 800.8169, something like that. And then get the square root of both sides. Square root of that gets 28.3 uh, because, yeah, they wanted to round it off to the nearest uh, decimal place. The final part of question eight is they tell you this shape here is symmetrical. Um, forget about this part. Just, uh, is it C, C, D? I don't have them written in here, but let's say this is D. C, D, E, and F. This is uh, symmetrical around this line. Basically the triangle on top is identical to the triangle on the bottom. And they want you to find the area of this whole area here. Um, really what they want you to do is find the area of this triangle and just get two of them. That's it. That's what being symmetrical there will matter. So how do you get the area of a triangle? Well, luckily enough, again, our book that you're allowed to bring into the exam, they'll give you one in the exam, in fact, um, has the answer, area of a triangle, it's in there. They'll tell you the area of a triangle is equal to, they'll write it as uh, AB, sorry, AB sine C. So that's a, a, a length, a length, and the angle. And none of these are related. So this length, that's its angle. This length, that's its angle. This length, that's its angle. So they all have to be different. So these are all different. That's uh, one length, and its angle's not involved. There's another length, his angle's not involved. And this angle, and its, its length isn't involved. So this, this formula works perfectly well for this. 
the area is equal to a length, 22, doesn't matter which, uh, times um, the other length, 11.8, times the angle, times sine of the angle that's not related to these two lengths at all. This angle is not across from those lengths, and that's a uh, 110. Put all that into a calculator, and uh, let me just check my notes here. Now, here we go. We, you get 121.97. But remember, they wanted the whole area, so two times this. Multiply that times two, so uh, two times a is equal to, and they want you to round it off to the nearest uh, whole number, so two, four, four. Two times that would be uh, two, two, four, three point nine something, um, so two, four, four. Okay, that answers all of question eight. If you have any follow-up questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching, have a great day.